Hey guys, welcome to the Commercial Roofer community where we help you start and grow your commercial roofing business into the most optimal version it actually could be. I brought a guest in today that I've been wanting to chat with ever since we crossed paths uh, over in Arizona at the Best of Success conference uh, about a month or two back. I felt like it was 120% in alignment uh, due to today's society really just seeming like, you know, everybody's obsessing over this new chat GPT and AI and all of those good things. And probably for good reason. I, you know, it, it almost seems like in, in my, you know, my opinion, like we're kind of reliving the dot-com bubble or the dot-com boom of the early 90s or, you know, even the, the early, you know, 2000 social media wave that, that came through only, you know, in comparison to the wave of the social media, it's like this AI thing seems to kind of be like a tsunami. So our guest today, like I said, um, you know, kind of in the thick of that whole AI deal is Sebastian, Sebastian from Real of Voice. And Hi. Sebastian, I'm super pumped to connect with you. Um, could you give my friends here maybe the rundown on who you are and what this crazy real of voice deal is? Yeah, man. Thank you for having me, Cody. And uh, yeah, so I'm Sebastian. I'm the founder and CEO of real of voice. Real of voice is the leading speech analytics software in the roofing industry. So speech analytics, what it means is when uh, you have uh, salespeople talking to customers on a Zoom call like this or over the phone or face-to-face -face in their businesses, right? Uh, you know, trying to make a sale. Uh, they will be recording their conversations, right? Uh, through a Zoom bot, like the ones that we're using right here, or uh, through a phone, or if it's face-to-face -face, through the Real Voice mobile app. And then uh, our AI will automatically transcribe, analyze, and give the salespeople feedback on how they need to talk, what they need to say specifically, so that they can improve their chances of, uh, of winning more deals. And that's that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, man. So like the the whole AI, it's it's kind of a weird, strange dichotomy for me because um, at least from my experience and, and to my knowledge of the AI, like there's a lot of unknown. And uh, and when I say that, I kind of mean like in what's to come. And I think for me, there's also, you know, on one hand, I have there's fear of the unknown, like where is this AI stuff going and how crazy is it going to get? And then in the other hand, I also I also think that like it's cool, it's cutting edge. I think yeah. it's going to be a natural separator of like, you know, business A or, you know, business B versus business A. And I'd like your opinion, you know, since you're like I said earlier, you're right in the thick of it when it boils down to the to the biggest craze going on in the world right now what's your opinion on it if you don't mind like about like where we're at now and what where this ai thing will go or be you know 12 months from now so okay so 12 months from now i'm going to tell you where we are now where we're going to be 12 okay. months from now and where we're going to be like in five years which i okay. think is the, the the five years is going to be the scariest one for people so um <laughs> okay <laughs> so so yeah so where we are now so where we are now is that ai is basically and i think it's going to continue in the next 12 months uh, AI is is used as a as a kind of assistant, as a kind of uh, way to enhance the human being's natural capabilities. Right? Okay. GPT chat is exactly that. It's a way to enhance the natural capabilities of the human being. Because GPT chat still needs somebody to write the prompts, right? So when you're talking about what's going to be the difference between business A and business B, GPT mm -hmm. chat is a perfect example. If you have a software engineer that's, that really learns how to use GPT chat in order to produce great code, they still have to think and do logic and like solve problems. But if the AI can just write the code much faster and it's not going to be bug ridden. You're going to save a lot of time, like 80% of the software engineer's job. is like, you know, debugging, making sure that the code is working. So now that software engineer who's like, you know, usually spending 80% of the time doing things that they don't have to do. GPT chat is going to do the 80% and the software engineer is going to focus on the 20% that they should actually be doing, which is like actually thinking of how to design this program for the actual use case for their customer um, and, and thinking more creatively and thinking more like strategically about how they're going to build this with the help of a GPT chat, right? Got and it, it, okay. over the 12 months, this is going to become, right now, software engineers can't really do this yet because GPT chat is not there. It's not there where you can just say like, hey, write this code for me and you can actually deploy it in production. It's not there. Over the next 12 months, applications like GPT chat will become kind of scalable, meaning like right now it's just like a demo. If you go to GPT chat, it's like crashing all the time. You could just like use it in a demo. Uh, there's going to be people that are going to start 
building applications that are going to integrate sim seamlessly with GPT uh -huh. Chat. So over the next 12 months, it's going to become more scalable so that you can actually see what you see in the little demo in production and used in actual products and used in actual business workflows. At Rilla, we're already using GPT Chat in existing workflows, kind uh -huh. of manual, right? But we're just waiting for it to be actually deployable and scalable, like kind of like a product. That's over the next 12 months. Okay. As it regards to sales and what Rilla does, you can think of Rilla in the very same way. We are kind of like an AI assistant sales manager. That's what Rilla is. It's an okay. AI coach in your pocket. It's not replacing the salespeople and it's not replacing the sales manager. We're not there yet. We're actually not there. The AI cannot replace the human being. You still need a salesperson to talk to a customer. We should be fine now. Okay, perfect. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Goddamn Bluetooth mics. Every time I would say a word, it thought I was saying muted and it would mute itself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stupid, stupid AI. You see what I'm saying? The AI's yeah. not there. <laughs> like you said, it can't replace the human yet. We're it not still can. Yet. It's still very clunky. And, and, and it's still very clunky as an assistant, like GPT Chad. That's why you can't still deploy it at scale. But anyways, cool. so, so Rilla, um, when, when it comes to Rilla, you still need a salesperson Really, it's kind of like an assistant sales manager. The way we say it, it's like kind of Moneyball for sales. Uh, you know, Moneyball was the whole concept of how you start applying data science to play sports, right? And you yes. still need a team of coaches and sales trainers to actually look at the data to decide what's the best process, you know, to try to maximize our chances of winning games or winning deals. That's where AI is. AI can become the most powerful assistant for the human being ever. And that's what it's going to become in the next 12 months. It's just going to become better and better and better at assisting human beings at, at just enhancing their core capabilities. It's probably not going to replace human beings in the next 12 months to any significant degree. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's that kind of puts my mind at ease. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, how this is all going to tie into the, the roofing industry. Now, yeah. when, when something like, um, you know, when chat GPT is released to the public, right, you know, a couple months back, when, whenever that actually happened, you get a lot of people that jump on board and that are like, okay, cool. Wow, I didn't know about this. But now I'm going to jump in with both feet and I'm going to try to learn it. But you, it seems as if you've been in this space or in this world, you know, you didn't build real overnight. So it's like you yeah. got in early. Do you mind kind of filling us in on a little bit of background on where you came from and how you got that, how, how you ended up where you're at today? So I, uh, yeah, sure. I, I, uh, I used to be a stand-up comic. I used to do stand-up comedy in New York. And that's how, I mean, I, w I was in college, right? But I was just like not going to college. I went to uh, NYU. When you go okay. to NYU, there's always like an existential question every day. Should, should I go to class or should I go to Urban Outfitters? I decided right. to go to stand-up <laughs> comedy in shitty bars in, in the Lower East Side. So I did stand-up. I was just doing stand-up all the time. I, I, from stand-up, I kind of got this addiction uh, of like creating things from like zero to, to something, right? Like in, in stand-up, we just like you have a paper and you write a bunch of jokes and then somehow you turn that into laughter, like a bunch uh -huh. of strangers laughing. And I, was, I found that addicting. And, and like this whole concept of like embarrassing yourself in front of people and failing yeah. <laughs> really fast. Because so kind of, that's what you're, you're, doing. Uh -huh. you're, you're kind of like optimizing that product. Like you take it to market yeah. and, you know, you take it yeah. to the club and you're like, okay, no one really laughs. So we come, go back and we work on it a little bit. And then, yeah, you know, come back yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The way I would do it in stand up. And this is what I mean, Dave Chappelle says the best stand up comedians are failing or are bombing like at least 50% of the time. At least 50% of the time. He's <laughs> always trying new things. And that's the yeah. art. It's like you're just literally failing the, the most amount of times as fast as possible so you can come up with a good set. And just like you said, you have an idea, you literally go test it out. The way I did it in stand-up, it was like six days a week. I would do like seven shows a day, six days a week. And I would oh, literally wow. start at 2 p.m. on. I, imagine the kind of degenerates that will go to a, like a stand-up show on a 2 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> it's like people who got laid off the day before. Uh, before it's like it's like it's, it's like doing a strip club in the morning shift when everybody's tired just like nobody cares yeah <laughs> so, so then uh so i would just like literally do from 2 p.m to 2 a.m stand-up show stand-up show stand-up shows always test fine-tuning the, the joke and that's kind of what you do with tech products right it's like mm -hmm. the exact same thing you launch a product you iterate you fine-tune you you kind of make it better based on feedback um, I started my first company right out of college after I got addicted to building tech products, just like I was to stand up. And I graduated 2018. My first company, I was always interested in this. Um, my, my whole vision since I started tech companies was uh, in technology over the last 10 years. And this is changing now. And this is interesting for people to know. Okay. Technology over the last 10 years, because interest rates were low, 
was only like if you could build a tech company that sold to other tech companies, right? So like people in Facebook and Google and people who work in tech companies, you could actually be a billion dollar company because the idea was in the last 10 years that technology is going to replace the entire world. So if you yeah. just built a company that sold to Google and they were like, Google's going to take over. So you're going to take over the entire market. And because the interest rates were zero, there was no price for the future. So it doesn't matter if the tech companies is going to take them a hundred years to take over the world. If you just built for that, people assume like, oh, you're going to take over the entire market. That changed, right? And this wow. is actually important for roofers because there's going to be a massive influx of technology coming into industries that have traditionally been overlooked by venture capital, by, you know, by startups, by technology in general. Uh, and now you're starting to see a lot of funding coming from private equity, from venture backed startups coming into the space for roofers, for HVAC, for people that have been traditionally overlooked by technology because interest rates went up. And now it's not as sexy to sell to other tech because like techs are the tech stocks are the biggest ones taking the dip, right? Because yeah. interest rates are high. And so, um, so now what's happening is um, I, I always had this. My first company was like selling to brands like Heineck and Molson that sold offline. I was always interested in how technology was going to come to the offline world. Oh, wow. um, uh, okay. It's eighty-five percent it, it, of commerce happens offline today, even like with Amazon and everything. So I think a big trend of the next ten years is technology coming offline. Was um, that still in the? So your first venture was with offline companies as well. Yeah. So, was that still in the marketing or sales space or do you yeah. mind kind of elaborating a little bit on, on what that might've been? Yeah. So, so I'll tell you how we came up with the real idea. So we were okay. selling a field marketing management software to brands like Heineken, and Molson Coors, Get Around Cash App that did field marketing. Field marketing is when you have like a bunch of college students, super energetic with uniforms and they hand out Red Bull to people. Right. And it's like, it's, not, it. field, okay. it's not field sales. It's field marketing. You're just like, like literally <laughs> putting out swag and stuff like that yeah like promotional modeling and marketing type yes stuff, right? yeah okay. it doesn't have to be models it could just literally be like a college kid with a uniform like handing out repo but yes that is part of field marketing <laughs> yeah okay. and uh it was like a software to manage the, it was like a crm for field marketing to manage the whole field marketing event like simple software uh you know it's kind of like a glorified spreadsheet kind of thing you schedule you manage the contractors for, for the field marketing. You get the swag for the field marketing. You get the data reported from the event. Like that was like our software to manage the whole field marketing end to end. And cool. one day I was okay. talking to the field marketing manager for Heineken. And I just asked her a bunch of questions. I said, lady, it says here that you guys do 50 events a week. And she said, yes. And, and I said, it says here that you guys talk to 100 people per event. And she said, yes. And I said, that's 20,000 people that you're talking to every month. These simple conversations here, try our new seltzer that we're launching. People taste it. It's like, oh my God, this sucks. This is taste bad. And they leave. <laughs> like it's really quick conversations. And I said, yeah. 20,000 of those conversations in a month. How many markets are there like you and Heineken? And she said, about 200 in the country. And I said, holy shit, there's 4 million face-to-face -face conversations happening between Heineken field marketeers and consumers. In Heineken, at, at the time I realized that Heineken had like 500,000 points of engagement in social media. So like if you look at YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everything that mentions Heineken online, there's 500,000 interactions a month at the time. And okay. they had 4 million interactions offline. So what I realized is like, oh my God, these brands, the biggest brands in the world, they have more interactions with their consumers offline than they do online. What if we could actually make the offline interactions as measurable and analyzable and easy to track and improve as the online interactions that people have in social media? What if we could actually build the Google Analytics for offline sales and marketing? And, wow, okay. and then that's when we came up with the idea for real. It's called Gorilla because of Gorilla marketing, because it comes from field marketing. Yeah. Uh, but then since then we've, you know, it's not only field marketing, it's sales. It's anybody that's talking to a customer uh, because you're, you're making this voice, basically data, just as you, you know, like the social media companies use the clicks to turn it into data. Yeah. It's insane. Okay, cool. So then you took that. How did you transit transition? So did you have partners in that first venture? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then did you exit that company uh, to start Rilla Voice or did you guys evolve into Rilla Voice from what you were? We, uh, we exited, but we basically like we had two co-founders. One of them came on board with me with Rilla. We basically just split the cash that we had made, like the profits. And we had the product running and we told our customers like, listen, we're going to go and do this yeah. thing. And the product just kept running. And that's fine. to some people that use it. Um, but we literally just played the profits. And I said to my co-founders, like, I'm, I'm taking my money and leaving. And one of my <laughs> co-founders was like, fuck you, man, I'm coming with you. <laughs> so then nice. we both, and we both launched Rilla. So let's talk about maybe like 
what it looks like as if I'm the roofer, what does it look like to utilize yeah. Rilla in the day to day? Yeah. So you're a roofer, right? Or you're a commercial right. roofer, right? This is commercial roofing yeah. only, right? So right. And no, commercial we have all kinds here in this group. So it's okay. uh, <laughs> guys that are operating as commercial roofers. And then we have a lot of guys. Probably more so. I'd say we're probably split 70, 30, 80, 20. Uh, and we have majority of residential guys in this group that want Got to it. want you know, to get into commercial. Correct. Got it. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about both, right? You're a residential roofer or you're a commercial roofer. If you're a yep. residential roofer, you're likely talking to customers. You're doing some sort of door knocking, right? You're doing some sort of uh, calling the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, then after you door knock, you're maybe getting an inspection. And then you're getting an adjuster meeting if you're doing insurance. And then finally, after the adjuster meeting, everything's there. Then you're doing a product selection meeting where you sit down with them for like an hour and you actually try to, you know, you sit with them in their home and you present to them and you try to upsell them. You try to get a good deal, right? Exactly. You're in commercial, yeah. Anywhere, anywhere uh -huh. between probably three and six different types of conversations happening right. in the process. Exactly. So you have like, and a lot of this in residential is probably face-to-face. -face. So if like the, in residential, we typically see that most of the conversations are happening face-to-face. -face. Maybe there's a call here and there, right? Or an email. Most of it's face-to-face. -face. Uh, in commercial, you're going to call on the phone, have a Zoom meeting, try to get to the buyer, do maybe do a big presentation. Maybe try to, uh, if it's like a small business, you try to like literally cold outreach, you go there, show up and try to get to the owner, right? It's like a little bit of a different process because it's B2B, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. well, it's not just like, hey, Miss Tom owner, I have this thing. Uh, we got insurance, it's going to cover your roof. Do you want to get it for free? It's, it's, it's different, right? Right. Um, but, but there is some, and, and I would say in B2B, there's more online, but there's still a lot of big face-to-face -face component. So let's Got say it. you're talking to a customer face-to-face, -face, right? You're a roofer, you're out there door knocking. You're going to literally, there's like Rilla door knocking mode where you literally live, leave Rilla on the whole day as you're door knocking, right? You're just like, they're finding deals, commercial, residential, and you just leave Rilla on the whole day. You just okay. activate at the beginning of your day. You turn it off at the end of your day. And then what Rilla is going to do at the end is automatically clip the the actual conversations that you have to with customers to the right points of the conversation is going to clip, clip that eight hour file into like the proper conversations that you have with people so like the way you use it in your day to day is you like turn it on forget about it and then at the end of the day all your conversations are there like actually clipped actually matched to your crm so that you can go back it's like oh i talked to mrs thompson here from this address and you could just go See, back that to makes that conversation. way more uh -huh. sense i was thinking uh you know I, I didn't know so i was thinking i'm like man these guys that are going door to door are they gonna have to like turn it on turn it off turn it on no 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 no, no. Okay. so if you're going door to door uh we work with amazing tools like spotio for instance if you're if you're door knocking you're probably working with someone like spotio um uh, where you could just Rilla will sync to your door knocking app. So you will literally mark down the door knocks as you are on your, you're literally doing that already. So you will yeah. continue to do that in Rilla at the end of the day, will will match the conversations to the times that you were door knocking and sync with the data that you're getting from your door knocking tool or your CRM. Perfect. So at the end of the day, all your conversations after you forgot about it are going to be perfectly matched and perfectly clipped. And you can filter for the ones that were successful for the ones that were not. So you're going to have a really seamless recording experience, right? Mm -hmm. After that, after that, you're going to get uh, not just a recording, you're going to get analytics. So think about it like a workout app, right? Like a workout app that's tracking your heart rate. It's tracking like the amount of effort that you're putting in and the amount of steps, right? Like superstar athletes track everything about their physiology, right? Sure. How much they're sleeping, their calorie count, their heart rate, their breathing rate, their like, everything, everything, everything they're tracking. Michael Jordan used to have a coach that would manually look at him right? His, phys his, his physical coach. And he would count the steps that Michael would take every single game and every single quarter. And he would keep track of him. And in the fourth quarter, he would tell Michael, he's like, Hey, you're overworking. You need to take it. You need to like not work as much in the first quarter. Cause you're, you're more tired. Cause you've been taking more steps than usual. So he would try to balance Michael. So literally tracking everything, tracking everything about yes. his and, and real is basically like a workout app, but not for your bodies. Cause you don't play sales with your bodies. You play sales with your voices. That's how you play the game. And uh, real is tracking everything from like, how long do you talk versus the customer? Your talk ratio, right? Uh, how much interactivity are you generating in your conversations? Uh, how fast are you talking, right? Versus how slow? How many questions are you asking per conversation? It will measure what you say. Are you spending five minutes talking about pricing before even building rapport with the customer? Really is going to track that. And then after it tracks all of that, because it's synced to your CRM, Rilla is going to know what the successful conversations look like from your, from your entire sales team. So imagine you have 10 salespeople and you have two top performers and they have a conversion rate that's like 50%. And then your average conversion rate for everybody else is like 20%. 
there's something that those top performers are doing in those conversations that's much different than the ones that are at 20%. So really is going to identify what that is. Yeah, and then, through the analytics. Okay. And then give everybody feedback as to like, hey, your talk ratio is too high. You need to lower your talk ratio because the two top performers when they're closing deals at 50% of the time, they're talking 50% of the time and you're talking 80% of the time. So you need to lower your talk. Every single metric is going to have feedback automatically that's based on reality. It's not based on like some algorithm we came up with. It's based on what is actually working for your sales team. Just do more of that. So then really just gives you feedback like that. Dude, I love that. Okay, so perfect. So now you got my mind thinking and I'm going to ask, I'm trying to put myself in the seat of a roofer so I, I can ask you, you know, questions that are relevant. It's kind of off my notes here, but um, <laughs> so as a roofer, you know, I'm a newer roofing company and I don't necessarily, I, I've never been trained on actual roofing sales process. Yeah. Do you guys have best practices that, yeah. you know, I, I buy into Rilla, I become a customer of Rilla and I don't know where to begin as far as like where my analytics should be. Like what is, right. what, what are best practices? Do you guys have those lined out where you can say, Hey, here's what we're yeah. seeing working in the home. Yeah. We've analyzed like 500,000 sales conversations <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for uh, in home improvement in general and roofing is probably like a hundred thousand. Um, but yeah, we definitely have best practices that you can start with just like industry benchmarks of where you should be. Right. Um, like we, like there's like four, there's like three key things that, 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 that we've learned that are in the product that you can actually see. Like, for instance, if you're, it depends on the conversation type. Also, if you're door knocking, uh, for instance, the average, uh, door knock is like two minutes and 30 seconds long. So the average door knock that actually turns into a conversation. So really knows that. So it knows that if you're not getting to that two minute, 30 second mark, you're actually not getting enough time you know, FaceTime with a customer to actually generate, overcome that objection of like them telling you like, get the hell out of my door. <laughs> or, or if <laughs> so you're too, at 10 minutes, you're probably saying a little too, ma too many things. You yeah, have to be able to tell the most important things in less than two minutes and 30 seconds, right? Because right. You, you're only going to get that amount of FaceTime if you're actually being successful, right? And then if you actually did a good job in those first two minutes and 30 seconds, then you might actually get more FaceTime with, you might actually get an appointment. You might actually get the, the so that's one thing. If you're actually in an appointment with a customer, we figured out that in roofing, it's really, really important to keep your talk ratio in check. The average sales rep, this is the average sales rep, the average sales rep in a conversation, in an appointment with a customer, like you're literally sitting there in a product selection meeting, think about it. Like, or if you're in commercial roofing, you're like presenting to the buyers or like to actually the decision maker, uh, like an hour, two hour long appointment. The sure. average sales rep talks for like 75% of the time. The top performers, the top performers that are making like $2 million, $5 million in revenue every single year for their business, they talk between 45 and 65% of the time on, on average consistently. So they're talking like 20 to 50 50 percent less <laughs> than than the average performers. So keeping your talk ratio in check when you're in an appointment, super crucial. Um, and then there's like other things that I can talk about that are more specific about what to actually say. But yes, we do have industry benchmarks that can help you. Okay, awesome. That's perfect. And then I know at the very beginning of this call, you also mentioned, you said, so this uh, Rilla app can be utilized in the field. It can be utilized on the phone. It can be utilized, you know, how we're utilizing it right now, yeah. you know, over Zoom. And um, I guess, so in the field, I think that's pretty... Um, I think everyone's going to understand how that's utilized, right? We can use it at the door. Yep. We can utilize it inside the home. We yep. can utilize it on the commercial side, you Just know, like while, we're, yep. while we're sitting there, you know, conversing, um, you know, having consultation type meetings with, with people in the field at, on the commercial side. Um, but what about for our like receptionists? Is there mm -hmm. thing, like we could even hook it up for the receptionist, right? To make sure that they're saying, what well, we want them to be saying, or if we have, um, for instance, part of what we're coaching guys on in the commercial space is setting up outbound um, calls, like an outbound call center like yep. internally yep. within their business, right? And I think the big picture, if we zoom out a little bit, is that there's not one place that we need to monitor KPIs. It's rather we need to compartmentalize and, and gather different KPIs from each yes. division. And yes. this is kind of a tool that we can utilize that, right? Because we're in the business of utilizing our voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like that point that you mentioned, super crucial. So yes, it works for the call center as well. It works for the phone, works for Zoom, works for everything, all inclusive. You're going to have different KPIs and different ways to tackle each kind of conversation, right? So like mm -hmm. a door knock is much different than a call. Call is much different than a consultation. 
a consultation in person is much different than a consultation online. There's different metrics and you're going to have to try to optimize for, for each and every type of setting, right? Uh, so yeah, you, you should set different KPIs and you should have different kind of training methods for each different type of conversation type that you have in your business. Awesome. Sick. So we, we spoke kind of generally when, you know, we're saying like, this is a great asset or a great tool for, for roofers in general. But if we like, kind of like focus in a little bit, who, what type of roofers is this perfect for? Like, where do they need to be at within their business? And who is maybe not really uh, the best person for you guys yeah. to talk to? Like, who's performing? The, like, what types of businesses do you see performing the best with Rilla right now? Yeah, so Rilla is a data tool, right? Where it's it's going to allow you to, well, it's a data tool and an operations tool. So uh -huh. the problem that Rilla solves fundamentally, the first problem, actually, is that if you're a roofer and you have, let's say, five or 10 salespeople, you're likely already thinking, or you've already done this, that you're, you're thinking about getting a sales manager, or you've already gotten a sales manager. And the reason, the fundamental reason why you get a sales manager is actually so that the sales manager can kind of like keep everybody in tech and like keep everybody following the process, that your numbers don't drop as you're hiring more people, right? Your conversion right. rates, your average ticket size, you want to make sure that people are sticking to the process. And the way that sales managers do that is by going on ride-alongs. <laughs> Typically, they go on ride-alongs, they call people, they try to make sure that they're sticking to the process, check their numbers and all that stuff. Ride-alongs are super time-consuming because if you go on a one, one ride-along with one person, you can't be with the other nine. It's going to take you the whole day. The sales manager is spending a lot of their time doing ride-alongs. If you have that problem already, where you like are spending a ridiculous amount of time yourself or your sales manager doing ride-alongs, really is probably going to be a good fit for you. And that typically happens when you are above five salespeople. When you're just like your own uh, shop, like you're just one person, real is not going to be that helpful of a tool because the data has nothing to compare to it. It's a, <laughs> if you're just like one person, then it's going to be like, you know, hey, this is your metrics, but it's not going to be able to compare you with anybody else in your team. You see what I'm saying? So yes, it's going to be less useful. It's not, it's not useless. It's just less useful if you have just a one person team because you can actually see what you're doing. When you have a team of 10, you actually cannot see what they're doing all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then yeah. if you have a team of five, I would say that's when you start thinking of getting a tool like Rilla. If you have 10, definitely, definitely need to be using a tool like Rilla. Uh, some of okay. our customers, you get an idea, K-Post uh, uh, Roofing, Belden Roofing in Texas. Uh, they already are at that mark. We have a lot of customers in roofing that are in that range. So, Awesome. Yeah, a couple guys actually that I ran across out at uh, Best of Success. So yeah. Um, yeah, another idea while you were mentioning that last topic or kind of covering that last topic is this almost seems as if like a tool for retainage too. So I talk to anywhere from three to, you know, I'm on three to four calls a day with roofers across the country, figuring out if like our services are good for them, right? Or, if, yeah. or vice versa. And, um, a con you know, there's a few major pain points within the roofing business that I tend to run across day after, you know, meeting after meeting after meeting. It's always the, the same stories. And it's that people don't want to work or I can't keep employees around. And yeah. I always tell guys like, well, the main thing is that people, you know, from my past experience is sales reps want to always feel a constant state of progression or like they're working towards something they're getting better they're seeing you know the yep. fruit of their labor and i feel like this is a tool that like that's one of my like core beliefs is like that's how you keep people around and so i feel like this is a tool that will do that for them it will let them know where they're you know lacking in skill and be allow also allow them to see those analytics as they do get better um in conjunction so you have like this tool in conjunction with giving them you know, different milestones to shoot for along with, you know, the proper training that they need to, to be able to continue getting better. So, um, yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted to drop that in there because like, it's kind of, when you were talking, I'm like light bulb, you know, went off. Yeah, Seems yeah like no, it's, a, it, it's, it's totally, and it actually, you can actually see tools that like really help you improve your ramp time. Like from like, you get a new rep that's like, you know, to ramp them up to success typically mm -hmm. takes like three to six months to get a new rep to, to actually ramp up to success. And in that time, that's when you're going to lose a lot of people because think about why people get into sales. They get into sales because they want to make money, <laughs> right? And it's, it's kind of going back to the sports analogy. It's kind of like working out, right? If you're trying to get in shape, right? And you're going to the gym and you're not seeing progress, most people quit. <laughs> they quit. They quit. They, they, most people, they have their New Year's resolution. I'm going to get in shape. They quit the gym. And it's typically because people 
don't see progress quickly enough, right? Yes. If you have, if you go to a gym and you have a personal trainer, your chances of retaining are much higher because they're going to be able to show you exactly what it is that you're doing wrong so that you can actually start seeing results faster, right? Um, the same thing in sales. If you get people in sales, because at the a lot of the times, right? There's just people that are not going to want to work hard, period. That's fine, right? Those people you can kind of like filter out, but there's two things that matter in sales. How hard you work and how smart you work, right? And how smart you work comes into your, like, you know, simple thing. If you're like a residential roofer, you're door knocking, you can count the do- number of door knocks that people are doing, right? That's how hard they're working. If you're, yeah. You have a guy that's knocking on a hundred doors, he's working pretty hard. Mm-hmm. And you want people to work hard. Like, here's the problem. You can't, you can't just keep working. Like there's a limit to how hard you can work because there's eight hours in the day. <laughs> you can't like, there's just like, not, or 12, like even if you're working, 12, like you can't just keep working hard until infinity. And, and then also, seeing- also to that point, like if you knock a hundred doors, but uh, let's say you knock a hundred doors, five days a week, you knock 500 doors that week. It doesn't, you're not getting better if you're, if you're not like, able to see like where you're falling off if you don't have those analytics and it's like to me it's like you know you have you have these guys they're like I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm like (laughs) well yeah man well just because you've been doing it for 30 years you've been doing it the wrong way for 30 years yeah yeah yeah. in order to short circuit that I think seeing these analytics is is a way to mitigate that well and then to your point like that if you're knocking on 100 doors and you have a conversion rate of one percent or less right that's uh-huh. pretty demotivating. So you're actually, so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where it's like, if you're working hard and not seeing results, you're more likely to fall off. Whereas if you have a person that's like, has a 10% conversion rate or a 20% conversion rate, of getting yeah. an appointment, the same hundred doors that they knocked on, they got 20 or t- 10 or 20 appointments. You only got one. That person's more likely to go out and door knock the next day because they can actually see the results, right? So then how do you, what's the difference between that person that converted at 10% or 20% versus the person that converted at 1%, which is a 10 X difference, right? That's what we try to identify. It could be something so stupid. You could have the hard, the, the, the biggest strategy in sales is when you have people that are really trying to figure it out, they're working really hard and they're putting in the effort and they just don't figure it out because of lack of coaching, because we can't coach it because we can't be out there with them. That's the biggest tragedy for those people that would have actually been killers, but you didn't devote enough resources and time and, and, and coaching yeah. uh, so that they could actually get to where they need to be. Um, Rilla helps you save those kinds of people from becoming, you know, <laughs> failures at, at, at your sales organization to becoming superstars. I and mean, we've seen this all the time. We have a rep who was like converting at like 15% when the company average was like 30 and they needed them at 30, yeah. 15% on their way out of the business for months. They put them on Rilla. The owner of the company was able to see themselves where the rep was messing up live, fix it. And in one month, that rep went from 15% conversion rate to 50% conversion rate. That's a 233% wow. increase. Yeah. And that rep became one of the top performers in the company consistently after that month of just like, fine-tuning a couple of things just needed a dashboard just needed to know where you were <laughs> yeah that was it that was it just fine-tune it sick okay cool man is there anything else that we didn't cover that you know somebody that's kind of on the edge of their seat you know they're like man this sounds very enticing that that person might need to know in order to you know pick up the phone and give you guys a call yeah so go to rillavoice.com that's r-i-l-l-a voice.com and if there's a little link there you book a link it's going to put you in touch with one of our people if you want to learn more about it and if you're still you know unsure of what this all means for you and your day-to-day i would literally just recommend watch the movie moneyball with brad pitt it came out like in 2010 it's one of the best movies i think just watch the movie moneyball and it's all gonna click (laughs) a little bit confusing (laughs) all right sick man well thank you very much i appreciate you for joining us here in the commercial roofer community and um you know bringing this amazing tool to the market in, uh, you know, an industry that's kind of fractured, but, you know, just kind of behind the eight ball also when it comes to technology. So greatly appreciate it. I know you're extremely busy uh, just from since we started our friendship. It's it's hard to nail you down. So, um, all right, buddy. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And we'll, we'll catch you guys next week on the next video. Boom. Thank you. Yeah, dude. (laughs) <laughs> right, that, was great. that was good i'll uh i'll like clip it out a little bit i'll probably use some of the clips for uh social media type stuff so i'll make sure you guys get tagged and all of that and then i'll let you know when it's released to the um the actual community uh to play out like it'll be streamed like it's alive essentially and uh just through some, we're gonna I think we'll put it through yard stream or um 
whatever the other one is that we use. Um, and then, yeah, dude, I'll just, do you want me to put a link? Do you have any sort of link or whatever that I can yeah. put in the comments for uh, them to like book a call with you guys? Yeah, just tell them to go to relevoice.com. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, I just put it in the base. All right, that's fine. I'll, I don't, uh, I'll type it in there. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, um, cool. cool, man. This was fun. I'm excited yeah. for it. Let me so know what, what I'm going to do. Out. Yeah, my my idea from here is essentially that I want to put this, I'm going to put this out to, I think we're up to like, we're consistently, the group's growing like five or 10 people a day. So I think we're like 2,000, 2,100 people. And wow. what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically, I'll put this in there, but then I'm also going to send a message, like an email out to our actual clients. We have like 50 some clients right now. And I'll put it out to them. I'll say, hey, I put this in the community. Let me know if you guys have any interest in it. And I'll like personally introduce you to Sebastian and just see if I can bring anyone over to you guys. Perfect. Amazing. Sounds good. All right. Cool, man. Well, good luck getting your uh, luggage and shit all dialed in. <laughs> yes, and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hit you up in, uh, in a month or two and kind of see where we can go next. Amazing, man. Looking forward to it. All right, buddy. Take it easy. Thanks. Bye.